Welcome to the 82nd episode of Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. My name is Simon Eady, and alongside me, I have my co-host and vacate Adrian, Adrian Pinter. How does it go, sir? What? what? Vacation, Adrian. Vacadrian is what you should have said. Vacadrian. I did say, I did say Vacadrian. And you said vacay, Adrian. Vacadrian. Yeah, hence my confusion. Simon Eady, but uh, I'm doing quite well, General Kenobi. How art thou? I'm doing quite well. It's not like we co-wrote this, so I feel like, you know, just stay in your lane, okay? I'm I'm going to question it. I was just confused. I didn't understand what you said, Simon. Okay? You're on vacation, and your name is Adrian. That's that's the... Yes, I, I, I now got it. The basic premise. Mm-hmm. I understand. I understand. My vacation has been going quite well, thank you for asking. Um, it's, it's been pretty, I didn't ask, but continue. It's been pretty chill. Uh, I was supposed to go to Cuba, but honestly, I'm fine that I didn't go. I, I've had a, a really great week, um, for multiple reasons. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm good. That's great to hear. When is your uh, vacation ending? If I may ask, if I may be so bold. Uh, I'm back at work on Tuesday. So the day after this podcast oh. airs, Simon. Oh, yeah. Crazy crazy yeah how's your week been not on vacation oh it's been a week not on vacation Mm, i follow you just been working yeah watching the odd tv series playing the odd video game oh no not too not too exceptional you know writing the podcast as i usually do Mm -hmm. week to week some uh some interesting uh, little little tidbit stories that are out there in the wild like for instance that the oscars is set to have multiple hosts Potentially, but also that they're going to have a host at all, which we did, I don't think we've talked about yet on this podcast. So that's very exciting on its own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, for the past, I don't know, like a few years, I think we briefly talked about this story uh, that, um, you know, Kevin Hart was set to uh, host the Oscars. And then, you know, some jokes from his past uh, were brought up and then he refused to apologize for him and then uh, essentially step down from being an Oscar host. And then the Oscars decided not to have a host for like three, four years, which, um, yeah. Despite the fact that Kevin Hart like dreamed mm-hmm. from, as he was a little boy from the time he was a little boy that yes. he would like to host the Oscars straight out of his mother's womb. He was uh, dreaming of it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have no idea if that's true or not. Uh, I would say probably not. Mm-hmm. It's true. It is true. But no, I don't think so. Uh, I am glad that there there will be multiple hosts um, or a host at all. I feel like th- those the years where there weren't any hosts, it felt very disjointed. And obviously, they would have people that would come up and present. That's not the same thing as having a host, having someone to you know steer the ship throughout the entire event. So um, I'm glad that the Oscars are finally doing this. There's uh, rumblings that it might be you know I think we even talked about uh, th- that like interview that tom holland did and him saying that he would want to host the oscars or how initially he said that he wouldn't and then went back and said of course i want to host the oscars so there's rumblings that he might even do it which would be interesting he's a very charismatic fella a likable dude it seems highly unlikely at least based on the variety article i was reading Mm -hmm. it seems like that will not happen but it it seems more likely that uh maya rudolph tina fey and amy poehler potentially might do it I don't know. Interesting. Some are fronting the idea of Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. Oh, I would like that. I would like that. Their chemistry on Only Murders in the Building. Fantastic, son. Yeah, so that seems to be where it's the rumblings are. The Zendaya, Tom Holland rumblings are, they exist, but I feel like it's unli- less likely. There's also been this talk of the success of uh, like when in 1983, like Walter Matthau and uh, Liza Minnelli, Dudley Moore and Richard Pryor hosted all together, which is four people. And I don't, I never, I've never watched the ceremony in which there was more than two hosts at the same time. But uh, I think, I think that'd be kind of interesting. I, I wonder if that would be too busy, but apparently that particular Oscars in 1983 was very, very popular. Like it was very well watched and well rated. So that, could be saying something as to what 
might happen. Yeah. But yeah, there's rumblings across the board. I'm just, as you said, happy that there's going to be a host because it's been very weird. They've always had presenters every Oscar ceremony, no matter what. So like, just not having a host just seems like it's lazy on their part. Mm-hmm. But so we'll see what happens. Yeah. But speaking of ratings, Adrian, mm-hmm. Nielsen ratings specifically, they they're always measuring, of course, cable network ratings for like when people are actually watching like linear TV, Mm -hmm. but they're also trying to get involved with streaming ratings and they have a, like a Nielsen top 10 for streaming. And they specifically in December 20th to 26th, Daredevil, they, they found that Daredevil, the Netflix TV series, Daredevil was actually in eighth place during that week, which is pretty interesting because it's, that's a long time out in terms of when it aired initially, or at least the first three seasons aired. Um, but the reason why is fairly obvious. There's connections with Daredevil and the MCU now, mm-hmm. in terms of the rumblings of what might come of that, uh, come of the hints and the the Easter eggs they've kind of dropped in a few MCU properties. So mm-hmm. that's a kind of an interesting thing. I was one of the people who who watched Daredevil. I was just going to say, yeah, December twentieth to twenty sixth. I think. Wait, did I watch it during that week? I think it was the week after. Mm-hmm. I think it was after Christmas. But regardless. My girlfriend and I, uh, we're still chugging, just going through to watch the Daredevil three seasons, the three seasons on Netflix. We've watched season one. Very good. Oh. And ends better than I thought it did. I just still don't like the costume. It's awful. But anyway, um, the we're on season two now with good old, what's his name? John Bernthal. Thank you. John Bernthal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for completing my sentences. No worries. Yeah. So I'm enjoying it, but I'm kind of surprised about that. Mm. Yeah, it's cool that uh, you know a show that was canceled like what five years ago, however long it's been, um, is making a comeback like that. And I hope uh, it gives you know Disney the the urge, that extra push for them to maybe bring back Daredevil for a uh, season four. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if it if it comes back, I, it's got to be on Star. We've said this like ten times now, mm-hmm. so I don't want to beat a dead horse, but. That is something that has to happen. It's got, it's got to be gritty. It's got to be the way that they they shoot that show. Yeah. In terms of the fight choreography, even actually, I just want to point out something just unrelated to the gore and the brutality of the fights choreography, the fight scenes in Daredevil, which we talked about at length, is what's missing in some of these, some of the you know Disney Marvel Cinematic Universe properties. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not always the greatest fight scenes, as we've said, and I, I said that it lacks a kind of uh, oomph, like a like a a potentially urgency, a potential urgency, or um, the kind of uh, which, which comes from the idea that anyone can die, like they can get their heads cut off or, or whatnot in the Daredevil series or Jessica Jones, etc. Mm-hmm. I think that the way it's shot is actually it's better in other ways too. There's a lot of use of slow motion, and the fact that, of course, Daredevil is blind. Spoiler alert. What? Um, I know. I'm sorry. Matt Murdock is blind. In which episode? Uh, all of them. What? No way, man. Right from the beginning. I know. How did I miss that? Hopefully that was in the trailer because I don't want to have, uh, you know, spoiled it for Kenneth Sadobauer, who often listens to our show and doesn't love spoilers when yeah. we spoil things, which we very infrequently, if never, spoil anything on this show. Mm-hmm. So I just want to say that. We're very careful, Adrian. I think we are. What do you think? I think we're kind of careful most of the time. Yes. All right. I think we're very careful. But anyway, regardless... Regardless, there are the way it's shot, the way they show and emphasize the fact that he's hearing or feeling, and, and there's this concept of the, the way they use sound and do slow motion while Matt Murdock is getting his bearings and listening to his surroundings. That is masterfully done. And the slow motion punches and things like that, where they slow things down, are very key moments. There's a lot of really good cinematography in these fight sequences as well. It's not just the brutality and the blood that is, uh, you know, is lacking. I mm-hmm. just feel like they could get a little bit more creative. Like some of those Hawkeye uh, fight sequences, like that one that was very memorable when they were running through the building, mm-hmm. through multiple rooms of this like kind of like a work office where people are still kind of like you know, finishing up their Christmas Eve work for the day mm-hmm. in that uh, finale episode. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. But uh, I don't know, kind of on the topic of like Daredevil, like, you know what? Read Ken's email because it kind of connects to what I want to say about uh, Daredevil possibly coming back. Okay, but before we do that on the topic of Netflix, of course, Knives Out is not releasing necessarily this year, but there was a leaked concept um, you sent me through Jimmy, through a proxy, this uh, Variety article that was stating that Knives Out 2 could be coming out at the end of the year. Oh, yeah, yeah, I read that. It's uh, it's quite exciting. I really like that first Knives Out movie, and it's 
I think we reported it on the show that Netflix was getting the distribution rights uh, to the um, sequel movie. And it's it's cool because it seems like they will still be releasing the movie in theaters like Netflix does for some of their like more premium products. Um, so this this quite excites me, man. Um, I, I like a good murder mystery and uh, what they set up in that first movie in terms of like tone. Um, I want to see a sequel to it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's cool. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited. The, key, the, ne- the cast announced for that movie is really quite solid too. There's nothing been confirmed though on the Netflix side. Like nobody came out and said, hey, this this movie's coming out this this year, or like by the end of the year or whatever. So I, I'm interested to see that get confirmed because I'm pretty sure that was like a leaked piece of information that Variety picked up on, mm. unless you read something different. No, no, I, I haven't heard anything from Netflix directly either. Okay. I am in the industry, but... Dire- directly. Yeah. They didn't call you up and say, Adrian, hey, bud. No. We got this new movie, uh, Knives Out. I don't know if you've heard of it, uh, directed by Ryan Johnson. Yeah. Uh, the sequel's coming out this year. Yeah, Mr. Netflix did not give me a call, unfortunately. Oh, this is Ted? Ted Sarandos? Uh, hi. That's, that's what he sounds like. Not at all, but yeah. I've actually... Um, never heard his voice, so I, that that could have been accurate. Ted Sarandos, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've heard his voice a couple times on various various phone calls we've had together. Anyway, because you're in the industry. Uh, let, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. Let's reach into the mailbag for a moment here, shall we? We ask our listeners to write into us with comments, questions, and corrections by way of Twitter or by email to spillfocuspodcast at gmail com. And Kenneth Saddlebauer wrote into us, and he said, "Casters of pods, the best use of fuck." in a motion picture belongs to Rocco and Boondock Saints. I recommend watching it around St. Patrick's Day. Let's stop just briefly for a second here, Adrian. We specifically talked about this last episode, Mm -hmm. episode 81. We talked about what was the best use of fuck. You just threw that into the the mix. Or what was the best use of a swear, I think you said. I'm not even sure what exactly. It was in regards to like a PG-13 movie because like PG-13 movies are allowed one fuck per per movie. Right, exactly. And then, yeah, I, I mentioned how I really like the use of it in Kong Skull Island. And then uh, you didn't really talk about a movie exactly, but you talked about like, I didn't. Uh, the, the, um, the, the one use of fuck in uh, I think season three of Breaking Bad uh, yeah. with Skylar White. That's right. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's weird. I, never, I still didn't come up with one necessarily, but the one, the one in Kong Skull Island is really good. Have you seen Boondock Saints, by the way? I have not. No, no neither have I. I know it uh, stars Norman Reedus. It does. Yeah. yeah. I always meant to watch it. I just never got around to it. Yeah, Sam. It's been on my list for years. Mm. Kenneth Stettelbauer continued, but on to more important matters. Your opinions on the Moon Knight trailer. I know that I hide it well, but I am a tad excited. The release date making it even sweeter. The only complaint that I've heard so far about the trailer is the way the suit appears to form around Moon Knight. The fun thing about his character is that we could just be seeing how he perceives things. The reality could involve him laying on a bed, trying to squeeze his tush into a white spandex unitard. I'm expecting violent fights, hijinks with the supernatural, hopefully the introduction of vampires and werewolves, and a whole lot of questions about what is identity versus reality. Thanks again for updating us on all things movie and series related. Hope to see you both in a theater sometime soon. Signed, Kenneth, and a quote here, as usual. Great heroes need great sorrows and burdens, or half their greatness goes unnoticed. It is all part of the fairy tale. A quote by Peter S. Beagle. Adrian, the Moon Knight trailer. Oh. Was, uh, I really loved it. I don't know what you th- you were thinking about it. I Yeah, I, re- I really like that Moon Knight trailer, man. It, it seems awesome. It seems very dark and gritty. And that's what that's what I kind of was saying about Daredevil Season 4 being, bo- being brought back. I know that this is only a brief trailer, uh, but this trailer really reminded me of that like visceral, violent nature that we see in Daredevil. There's there's actual blood in Moon Knight. Um, you know, w- Moon Knight's wearing a or like sorry, holding a gun, and he's you know covered in a little bit of blood. Then you see some you see some dude fall at the back of like a, a truck. A, you you assume he maybe like shot him, and then when he's in costume, he's just like bashing the one guy with, like with such intensity on the ground. Um, that guy wasn't a human, but yeah, but theoretically, uh, I, again, I just I feel like I can see this kind of uh, this almost inspiration that they're taking from the Daredevil Netflix series. And I'm hoping that this show is awesome. Um, 
because I think again that trailer is like top tier. It's it's very well shot. It's very well you know like spliced together. I'm very intrigued about where the story is going to go, and I'm kind of glad that this is this seems although within the MCU seems a little bit more disconnected from the rest of the movies and stuff. It feels like shit can just go down here. It's also in the UK, um, which is pretty neat. So you know it's not like directly connected to like new york city or whatever else like it, it reminds me a little bit of um not yet yeah not yet of course but on the first it's just the trailer yeah i know i'm just saying that it, it, it that's just my perception of things i think it will i'm sure it will eventually i think he's gonna be in the states because mark specter is an american oh my goodness an american but yeah um i could see um like with ken mentioning that uh maybe there's gonna be vampires and werewolves maybe they're gonna bring in um you know blade which would be pretty cool. Um, I would like that. Again, I'm I'm quite excited uh, for this series. This this trail looks really good. Mm. Yes, the trailer does look good. I got my expectations in check, but yeah, it's interesting. Mark Spector is again. He's American. I I feel like the chances are he's going to end up in the states, like at least by the halfway point of the of the series. I don't think it's going to take place in the UK. I, I think that the accent has actually been much criticized. Uh, I know that Ken says here that the only complaint he's seeing is the suit, which I think looks cool as hell. Yeah, I think it looks badass. And uh, I like the idea of it forming to his body and being almost like magical in nature and that it, it, it kind of just comes out of nowhere. I think that's kind of neat. Although I see what Ken's saying about it being potentially something that um, is an imaginary thing because he's just – everything is kind of in his head or not. You kind of have to figure it out. It's it's kind of like this idea that you don't know as the audience what's reality or what's not, and I think that that's kind of that's going to be a neat way to to run the series. So potentially the accent that he has on as well is also just a fake British accent that he thinks British people sound like. Although I did think it was realistic, so I guess just I'm not British, so I don't know. But that was a huge complaint on Twitter. People really thought that mm. Oscar Isaac's accent is bad. I thought it was quite convincing. But they're comparing it to like Dick Van Dyke and in like uh, Mary Poppins. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I saw no issue with it. When I look at bad accents, I feel like the last duel. But maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I didn't watch that movie still. But yeah, that trailer, I was just like, everyone sounds different. Everyone sounds like they're from like a different corner of the earth. It was that was an odd one. I just felt like the accents were going in and out. Like it didn't sound like the American. It was like these the Americans doing the British accents were like I don't know consistent. Mm -hmm. Whereas Oscar Isaac, I forgot that Oscar Isaac is an American man. That that's actually it's a weird thing. When I was watching the trailer for the first time, I'm like, wait, well, yeah, Oscar Isaac's he's from the United States. I don't. That's what I thought. I don't know. But again, maybe that's just my own na naivete mm -hmm. that uh, that caused that. But but yes, it's incredibly well shot. It's incredibly well shot. The blood though doesn't really fool me at all. I feel like it's not a star. Show. I was kind of hoping that that would be revealed. Yeah, I don't think it's but, going to be a star show. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not that hopeful that it's going to be that much more gritty. But uh, I mean, from the trailer, it looks like it is. But yeah. when was the date? Do you remember? Uh, I want to say March 31st, but I might be wrong. I know it's March. Um, let me find out for you. Okay. I don't think it's March 31st. March 30th. March 30th on Disney Plus. Oh my shine! And exciting. Very exciting. If you want to hear a bad British accent, you've come to the right place, Adrian. This is the place for it, not the Moon Knight trailer. That like kinda, my accent just kind of yeah. took took some turns. It was that was mul multiple corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. It was the last duel of accents, is what that was. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. It was. Okay, Adrian. What have you been watching this week? Um, Other than that Moon Knight trailer, which is absolutely fantastic. Oh, speaking of trailers, actually, if we want to just segue quickly, we both watched the Severance trailer. I know that. Oh yeah. Yeah, the new Apple TV Plus original series. Um, yeah, it looks really good. Uh, it's it obviously looks like it's going to have high like budget, um, high production value, as all these Apple TV shows do. This is like a show brought to you by Ben Stiller, which is quite wild, um, starring, you know, Adam Scott. He's probably the most recognizable actor for me. Um, and it's essentially like the premise is like these people, uh, they undergo a surgery where they sever their memories of uh, their regular life when they're at work and then their work life when they're outside of work. Um, but it seems like there's a mystery, a Bruin and like, what is this surgery and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, this is, this seems like a really cool trailer, something I definitely want to watch. I think 
it comes out in February. I'm just saying that off the top of my head. Uh, but what did you think of this trailer, Simon Edie? It's unreal. It's speaking of like a well shot, well put together th- trailer. Mm-hmm. Like again, the production values are obviously through the roof. This is a. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like I worked on like a theater play uh, a number of years ago that was very like um, retro futuristic. And like the way their terminals work and things like that, there's I get I'm getting that vibe. I just like the the production, not value. Well, value sure, but like the way the production is is done in terms of costuming and uh, the set design. I think it's just really really great. And I hope you recognize Christopher Walken. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Christopher Walken's in this show. Christopher Walken closet. Christopher Walken. We also have Patricia Arquette from. Uh, boyhood and the mo- and the show medium i don't know if you've ever watched the show adrian i've seen a couple episodes i feel like it aired when I, like on uh, whatever network when i was um visiting serbia as a as a as a young child simon oh she's like the main character of that i feel like patricia arquette is a chameleon in the way that everything i see her in she's just so she looks so different mm-hmm. which is interesting she was in actually with Ben Stiller. Uh, she worked with Ben Stiller, I believe, on uh, it was another miniseries that was really well regarded, and it was called Escape from Danamora. It was about this kind of escape from prison, and I believe it had Benicio del Toro in it mm-hmm. as well. No, I never heard of it. That's something I always wanted to watch. Ben Stiller is interesting because he's doing more and more drama stuff. I feel like mm-hmm. this is kind of a comedy. It seems like almost like a really dark comedy, more drama than comedy Mm -hmm. but yeah like it almost it gives me like thriller vibes almost yeah it does the music choice is so good too yeah daydream in blue by eye monster man i'm loving it i'm I'm loving it i'm excited for this they've got a lot of shows like geared up Uh, we're not getting sponsored by mcdonald's so i'd appreciate it if you don't use their jingle here until they seal the deal with us okay adrian sounds good man we gotta make money until they sign the papers those noises jimmy's Jimmy's right now in the U.S. He's in uh, in New York City. McDonald's HQ. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to get them to seal the deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For whatever reason, he's talking to um, actor Michael Keaton. And I don't think he realizes that the founder, the movie that Michael Keaton plays, the guy that invented McDonald's, um, that is, that that that's fiction. I don't think he realizes. Like, right. Well, like, you know, fiction, quote unquote. It's like Cersei. You know, it's like a biopic sort of thing. Like Lena Headey yeah. in, in uh, Game of Thrones. He's confused the the actor with the real life person. Mm-hmm. So he thought that Michael Keaton was the founder of McDonald's. Exactly. Right. Of course. Exactly. Jimmy's a little bit of an idiot is all I'm saying. Whoa, that's not nice. Okay. Dumb piece of shit. Jimmy controls your audio and the, the video portion of this podcast. There's so, no video. You know, he can... He can make you sound real dumb, is all I'm saying. So just be nice to him, okay? He's He does a good job. He works really hard. Kenneth, Kenneth Stadelbauer and Jimmy actually go way back. They're actually, they went to school together. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know that, audience. No, I didn't. Which school? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I didn't go to school with Kenneth. Oh, you didn't? No? No, no. Kenneth, uh, maybe Kenneth can write into us and, <laughs> and let us know. And, but but Kenneth, specifically, I, I he thanks us here in his email, just before we move on completely. Um which we kind of did move on, but then I just, I'm reeling it back in. Thank you, Kenneth, for writing into us. I know you're thanking us, but thank you. Mm-hmm. We will be here consistently Monday on Monday because we're so, uh, we're so dedicated, aren't we, Adrian? Very. So, you know, you can always tune into us, but uh, thank you, Kenneth, for writing into us because, you know, Kenneth doesn't get paid for this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, neither do we, to be fair, but yeah, he, he doesn't either. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course we don't. Yeah, we don't get paid. Uh, yeah. Hello? Are you there? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just thought you were going to say something after that. <laughs> I was giving you some breathing room. but uh, Yeah, no, I was I was hoping you'd chime in and say, oh, you're getting paid for this? And I'd be uh, like, no, no, of course not. You guys are getting paid? Question mark? Yeah, me and Jimmy. Like that. Uh, me and Jimmy are getting paid for this. Have you ever watched We're the Millers? We're the Millers. Yeah. Hmm. I don't. It doesn't recall. It doesn't ring a bell. Well, like we're we're the Millers. That's where that like meme comes from, where it's like uh, like with um, like Will Poulter, uh, Jason Sudeikis, Jennifer Aniston, and Emma Roberts, where it's like, oh, like you're getting paid this much. It's like, oh, I'm getting paid only this much, and then like and then it ends. It's like you guys are getting paid, you know, you know that 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 famous meme format, Simon, with Will Poulter's face. Uh, I don't necessarily, but uh, nobody's getting paid here. 
Nobody. That's all I'm saying. That's all I was trying to say from the beginning yeah. of this little conversation. Where the Millers is like a fun movie, though. Yeah, I like that movie. Adrian, what have you been watching? What else have you been watching this week? Tell me. Oh. I want to know. And the audience wants to know as well, of course. Yeah, Simon. So I have been watching, uh, not much actually, believe it or not, this week. I mean, I, I, technically, I've been watching a few things, but uh, I'm really only going to talk about one in detail, Simon. And that is a TV series, an anime TV series called Ghost Stories. But particularly, I'm watching the English dub of this show, Simon. And there's a reason behind that. Because Ghost Stories is this uh, anime show, obviously, like I mentioned, Mm. that was released in Japan in in the year 2000. And it was uh, a big flop, like just like a huge flop. Um, You know, had like generic storytelling, generic characters, generic plot, all of that sort of stuff. And then, um, you know, they, they lost a crap ton of money, that animation studio, and then sold it to um, a United States based uh, like uh, dubbing production company called ADV um, Studios, I believe, um, in like 2005. And they ADV Studios was literally just given free reign on how they could dub the, the this show. So pretty much what this studio was told is do whatever it takes to sell the show. The only condition is that like, they just had to keep the basic story intact and the names of major characters and like the ghosts in the show had to remain intact, but everything else was just like, they could just do whatever they wanted. And what resulted is one of the funniest uh, shows I've ever seen Um, because they just made this show into this ridiculous um and incredibly offensive um you know comedy series when it was not meant to be uh, in the first place and uh so it, it was translated incorrectly like they exactly just yeah they changed all the words pretty much except for again the, the names of the characters so that the premise of the show um at least in the english dub is like these five uh five young kids uh uh, Satsuki, um, which is like this, you know, young girl that just moves into the, like an old town where her uh, mom grew up, um, her younger brother, Keichir- Kachiro, um, and then, you know, three friends that she meets, this uh, girl named Momoko, uh, this dude named Hajime, and this dude named Leo. And together, they essentially just find ghosts in town and and using like Satsuki's mom's like, I guess, diary that she leaves behind. Um, they know how to deal with all these ghosts and send, essentially send them back to like the ghost realm or whatever the fuck. But that it plays pretty much back burner to how these characters interact with one another. Uh, the Momoko character is just constantly, uh, you know, preaching about like Jesus Christ and, you know, like Christianity and like calling all the other characters just like sinners and like ridiculous shit like that. Um, and part of my language here, but they all constantly call like Satsuki's younger brother, Keichiro. Um, like they, they just say like the word retarded and call him retarded constantly throughout the show, uh, which, again, is just shocking to me that this show ever freaking aired um, online. Um and then, you know, just like uh, the one kid, they made him into like a Jewish character and they just make like Jew jokes constantly. Um, and then again, it's just very offensive and ridiculous humor that goes on. So, sorry, where did it air? I mean, anything can air online. So it uh, I don't know exactly where it aired, but again, the 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 studio that bought it initially or did the dubbing for it, um, I guess now it's released on Crunchyroll so you can watch it in English. I don't oh. necessarily know where it aired exactly like on TV. Um, is this like the Dragon Ball dub type situation where is it the same guys who did, you know what I'm talking about? There's lots of those it, yeah, the, so back the, in the YouTube days. Exactly. So that's what, it, uh, like those abridged, like you'd see like Dragon Ball Z abridged series abridged. or Yu-Gi-Oh that's abridged series and yeah. stuff like that. And this show is considered, uh, funnily enough, like one of the first like abridged series, um, be just because oh. of like how ridiculous the dub is. But again, it's not abridged because it is the full episode oh. that they just redub in the most ridiculous way um i'm gonna i'm gonna send uh jimmy uh to send you like a compilation of this series um like the, just like a bunch of jokes just so you get a feel for how ridiculous it is and again this is very offensive humor like they they make so many offensive uh jokes but god damn is it funny and just the idea that this again aired uh, is amazing uh, and uh 
yeah, I, I, I'm really enjoying it. I, I think it's one of the funniest things I've seen in a uh, quite a while. And uh, I highly recommend it. I got a Crunchyroll subscription just to watch this. It was recommended to me by a friend of mine and uh, me and uh, our mutual friend, Peter, actually. Uh, we've been just slowly watching it um, over the past week. And yeah, I really, I really, really love it. I think it's just unbelievable. Um, and uh, yeah, again, very offensive. I do want to uh, preface that. So if you're not into like a fr- offensive humor, I don't recommend it. But um, I like it when they push boundaries sometimes. I see. Yeah. But that's really the main thing I've been watching. Uh, I, I mentioned last week that I've been rewatching Attack on Titan, slowly making my way through that. God damn, I love that show. I watched the new episode of Peacemaker, which was really great. They're mm, continuing on that trend. Peacemaker. Um, what a great show. It is. It's fantastic. Whereas like rated R movies don't necessarily do as well because you can't bring a family to the movie theater or whatever for box office tickets. Mm-hmm. I feel like rated R TV series are very popular. You know what I'm saying? Like you could... I feel like Game of Thrones is like one of the most popular shows of all time. There's a lot of violence in The Walking Dead. That's rated R, really, isn't it? It's just no, there's no, there's no swearing, but there's so much blood and gore in that. Yeah. I, it, it's interesting. Like there's these some of these shows are just extremely uh, violent. Mm-hmm. Uh, even Breaking Bad or Ozark, which by the way just started up. Today. Yeah, I watched the first episode uh, yesterday. Did we record this or yesterday? Sorry, yeah. yesterday. From the day we we're recording this, because we record on Saturdays, so that's exciting. Oh, so you watched the first episode of Ozark? It's yeah, not on the list here. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just talk about it once I finish it. It's a great start. Oh, I, okay. I only watched one episode out of the eight or however many released. My point is, whereas they may not work that well box office wise in terms of selling tickets, I feel like TV series that are rated M, you know, mature or rated R, do very well theoretically. Mm-hmm. Daredevil actually a very good example. So I wonder if Disney will look at that a little bit yeah. and maybe think about what their series could be as well in that regard. Yeah. For the MCU, I mean, for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Hopefully. I doubt it, unfortunately, but yeah. You doubt it. So you yeah. doubt... Okay, so just going back to briefly what we were talking about, you doubt that Daredevil will be a rated uh, Netflix Daredevil type season four. You think that it will be a PG-13 uh, iteration. Yeah, I, th- I think that's what they would go with. Um, and they'll like just toe the line, um, kind of like... Uh, how that Moon Knight trailer seemed to be towing the line. Yeah, but if you think about every MCU iteration, there's nothing that gets to that level uh, on the Daredevil side, like at all. Like it barely even scratches that surface. Mm-hmm. You, so you, you really think that they just won't they won't touch it, despite the fact that Deadpool is obviously coming out. Deadpool three. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't think they will. I don't know. I feel like uh, Daredevil's going to be a little bit more um, directly connected to the um, MCU um, in a way that uh, they won't be able to make it R-rated. But I don't know. I might be wrong. Again, this is just my prediction. Guess we'll find out, Adrian. Anything else you watched? No. This week? What did you watch? I also watched the Peacemaker episode. Thought it was amazing. Uh, The music choices are just unbelievable. The the humor is just ridiculous. And I just want to point out specifically that the, the, the actor who plays Vigilante, who I've not seen... In anything else, mm-hmm. like I know he's been in a, a bunch of things. He's just not in that many things. His name is Freddie Stroma. Is absolutely unbelievable. He's hilarious. His voice is perfect. He sounds like a cartoon character in some way. He almost like he almost sounds like Deadpool. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's fantastic, and his 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 quick wit, like you can see it. It just I feel like the the banter between Peacemaker and Vigilante is extremely entertaining to watch. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm just... Uh, so you're caught up now? Because like last week you said that you only watched the first episode and you're going to like slowly like, you know, maybe watch an episode a week. You're, you're all caught up? Yeah, I'm all caught up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's no secret that he's in it and that he's literally in the... Promotional material. The, the, the actual title sequence. Yeah, that, that as well. Yeah, that, like the title sequence kind of gives away pretty much every character. Well, not necessarily. I'm sure there'll be some, some surprises, but he's a big part of that title mm-hmm. sequence but anyways that's the, i'm just so surprised that that banter that connection that relationship it's interesting that's one of the most interesting things about this series so far but yeah the, actually well the relationship between all the characters we said this before but james gunn does a really good job with balancing that heartfelt tone with also throwing these wacky crazy raunchy themes into the mix so it's a Again, very good. I'm very impressed with it so far, and I'm curious how it's going to wrap all up. And I'm cl- I'm glad it's eight episodes, which most series, like for instance, the next show I'm going to talk about, end up kind of just hovering around six. They just don't really get there. And even Ozark, of course, it's split up into two uh, two parts, but it's going to be seven seven episodes for part one. Mm-hmm. Um, 
where it is, I guess, because they're all released at once. And apparently Jason Bateman was saying that the next part's going to release relatively soon. So I'm guessing by probably by mid-year, we'll see the second part of uh, of season four released for Ozark. But the show that I'm talking about and referencing that has six episodes, the HBO comedy series, White Lotus, oh. which I mentioned last week that I started. I watched two episodes and I was wondering, where are they going to go with this? Mike White, the director and writer for this series, he is directed and wrote, I believe, every episode. He's completely understands where he's going with this. I have no doubt in my mind. Adrian, uh, uh, this is a go-ahead. You should watch this show. Oh. It's really good. Are you done it? And uh, I'm not done it. Oh. I'm not done it. I'm so close. I'm the last episode of six. Um, but if they mess it up, I'll let you know next week. Okay. But uh, as of now, I am so impressed because it's just this, this constant boiling point. Like it's just, there's this this simmer that starts in the beginning. You can see that these people are, are, are just like, they just are not going to mesh off of each other. There's like a... Not a lack of chemistry, but it almost it's there's like there's a chemistry in that there's a good com- comedic chemistry between a lot of these characters, but the the tension that's created between these various families and individuals on this vacation in Hawaii, in this uh, vacation resort called the White Lotus, there is uh, a lot of a lot of tension, and it just keeps building and building and building as the season goes, and it's it's uh, it's doing a lot, and it it. it there's some mysteries in there they throw in like you have to kind of like you're trying to wonder about certain elements and like how they they're going to play out because they tease things in the very beginning of the the season that you're like oh what's going to happen with that and there's the music as well is just unbelievable i know i mentioned the music a lot but i i really think that it's a huge part of any production when i don't mention it i was like yeah it's kind of average but in this case so good and such a good theme song much like theme song for 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 Peacemaker, very, uh, I guess, simple graphic in terms of the way that the the main title sequence starts off, off the show. But uh, the composer, Cristobal Tapia de Vere, does such a good job with the music. And it's just this whimsical kind of Hawaiian-esque theme that's oh, – it just works so well with this comedy drama tone that, they're, that Mike White is going for. Mm-hmm. And uh, – I'm just so impressed. I'm very impressed. And again, production values every time, every HBO show is just unbelievable. It, it, they just they continue to knock things out of the park. And I, I think you said at one point, there's one show, might have been, uh, un, uh, no, not Uncut Gems, but something Gemstones. What's the, the mo- Yeah, The Righteous Gemstones. Right. The Righteous Gemstones, you don't love, but you could see the production values and why people do like it because of how it's just a really well put together series Mm -hmm. and uh this is not that this is really just really good in general but uh my point was that hbo shows are just so good every time they just they're so well put together and that's it just makes me very excited for the last of us because they there's just there i feel like there's no better there's no better place for the last of Us series than home box office Mm -hmm. i really do think that and i know that we talk about how apple tv plus and how they have really good production values but they don't always have the right i feel like pieces in place for a good story necessarily but i feel like hbo does most often like very often and another proof of that is succession oh like succession season three is again so good and the way it ends is so good again they they keep nailing their ending of the season there was only nine episodes in season three and i finally finished it after many many weeks of talking about how i was chugging through it succession is has again incredible production values. I keep saying this, but it's just it's so well put together in every way, and the acting is so top notch across the board. Like I just I don't know. Brian Cox is just a, a force to be reckoned with. He's so good, like uh, the head of the, the Roy family mm-hmm. in that show. If you're not aware of Succession, basically it's about this like I almost said crime family, but <laughs> it's not. But it's like this 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 billionaire kind of family. Uh, headed by Brian uh, Brian Cox's character, basically, and he, he, it's about who's going to potentially take up the mantle of the CEO, potentially of this company, of the children that he has. Who out of the individuals, Kendall Roy or or, or Siobhan or any of these individuals, who who might take it over? And you're just you're questioning who's going to take it because this family is incredibly dysfunctional. Like they're they're not a great they're like a powder keg, kind of similar to the to White Lotus. Any one of them can make the, a stupid choice at any given moment and they're just kind of, kind of balancing each other and their ridiculous selves. Some of them have addiction. Some of them are just unbelievably terrible. They're all terrible, really. They're, they're, every one of these people is awful, but 
Um, when are you going to watch season two, Adrian? I don't understand. What are you waiting for? What, what's the holdup? I don't know. That's my question. I don't know what the it's one of the greatest is. shows on TV. Like it, it, yeah. it really is. Yeah, I still got to watch it. Uh, I'll, I'll get around to it. I don't know. There, there's quite a few shows that I still need to watch and like catch up on. Honestly, I know like Euphoria is currently airing right now too, which I want to watch. Um, but again, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm stuck in these like almost comfort food sort of uh, states where I, I just want to watch something that's easier to watch, something that might make, make me laugh and something that I might be familiar with. Um, so like when I think about everything I've watched recently, again, that Ghost Stories dub, which I find hilarious, um, Attack on Titan, which I already know like what's going to happen. And, and again, I, I love that show so much. And then Peacemaker as well, which again is a comedy first and foremost I'd, I'd make an argument for um i don't know i'm just in the mood for that sort of comfort food right now hmm. I'll, I'll i'll get around to it i'll get around to it that's fair that's fair but uh yeah i don't know but like yeah the way you're describing white lotus i might uh, jump into that because it does seem like a little bit more comfort food like if it is a comedy it's also short yeah uh, i remember uh last week you mentioned that you like they, they were casting for the second season and that you didn't know if this was an anthology series i did a quick search after uh, the show just to g- give it a quick look up it is labeled as a like a min- like a limited series slash anthology series um so yeah, the next season's taking place in a place that's not Hawaii. Mm. So, and let, I mean, they may connect it like Fargo's an anthology series too, but yeah. the way that Fargo connects its seasons and the movie um, that came many years before it, I feel like that show is, that's, that's a really, that's a clinic in, in the way that it's kind of Easter egged mm-hmm. uh, some of the characters. Yeah. Yeah. Fargo is another show that I need to watch season four of. Like, it's like, what am I doing? Me too, but we can't find it, so we just yeah. may as well wait. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was hoping that it would go on Netflix already because they released the other like three seasons on Netflix about a year after, and it's been a year, right? Like it's been a year since the last season of Fargo. So, yeah, I was hoping that maybe it would be there. But will it ever be on Netflix? Because in that time period, Disney purchased FX. That's true. So will it go on Star? I don't know. So I'm wondering if that was a like a deal, like a season by season deal, and maybe yeah. they'll just decide to not put it there, or maybe they'll never put it there. Maybe it will always be on FX now, our favorite streaming service. Yes, just above AMC Plus or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Well, actually, I like AMC Plus way better because you don't need a fucking Rogers subscription, you guys. <laughs> yeah, at least at least there's that. All right, Adrian, are you ready to move on to the news? Um, no. Oh, well, that's, again, once again, just like last week and the week before that, the week before that, and the last 80 weeks before that. Mm -hmm. It's too bad. That's just too bad. Oh, my God. That's so rude. No, I think you're being rude. No, you're being rude. I'm trying to get this show going, and you are, you know, stopping it at every given moment. I'm stopping it like a, like a, like a, like a thing that stops things. Mm. That was very creative. Yeah, what would you, what's, what is a thing that stops things? Like a door stopper. A cork. A cork is a good one. What do you call those? Like, Is it literally just called a door stopper? Those little door things that you put under your door to make your door stay open? Stops it from closing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? The Joker. Yeah. I mean. That was, a, that was a reference to the Dark Knight when he says an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Yeah. That's my reference. Anyways, that's my reference for the day. Adrian, let's begin with a small collection of more focused stories. One reference. What's that? You're just going to have one reference the entire day? You stopped. You interrupted me so that you could say that. I was questioning you. You're just going to have one one reference? Well, I guess you'll find out. Okay. Okay, man. Jesus Christ. <sighs> you got your panties in a bunch today. So unprofessional. It's just so unprofessional, Jimmy. I don't I don't know why we deal with this guy. Jimmy's literally in the United States. At least at least keep, you know, the show. Jimmy's on the feed. He's listening to the feed from the United States. You know we do this remotely, right? Are you are you living on some other planet? He's obviously listening. Yeah, no, I'm living inside your walls, Simon. Oh my god. It's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let's begin with a small collection of more focused stories that have been particularly pertinent this week. Number one, according to publication Deadline, the Oscar-winning Parasite director, Boon Joon Ho's next project will be an adaptation of author Edward Ashton's yet-to-be-published science fiction novel, Mickey Seven. The new novel is set to follow a character called Mickey Seven, who is on a mission to colonize an ice planet called Niflheim. In this universe, a Mickey is a sort of android-like being that is considered an expendable employee capable of completing very dangerous missions that might otherwise risk human lives. 
When a Mickey's body dies, most of their memories can be transferred to another. As Deadline points out, Boon Joon Ho's story adaptations have often been relatively loosely based upon the core plot of the story he might be adapting. Time will tell how closely this Mickey 7 adaptation will follow Ashton's novel. Oh. The new film will be developed by Warner Brothers with the lighthouse actor Robert Pattinson in talks to star in a leading role. Adrian, what do you make of this? I know, of course, that you enjoy Parasite and you also like the work of Robert Pattinson. So, yeah, um, I think this is uh, this is awesome. I don't know. I'm, I'm quite interested in this premise. Uh, which is, uh, I don't know, it just seems like a cool premise. I, I'm, I'm curious what Boon Joon-ho can do with um, something that is way more sci-fi-esque than, you know, a movie like Parasite. I know he has like a like a few other movies. I forget what uh, the one movie's called, but it essentially has just like creatures coming out and like killing a bunch of people. It came out before Parasite. I mean, uh, Soap Pierce is pretty sci-fi-esque. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's a good it's, point. It's literally a sci- science fiction mm-hmm. film. Yeah, but it takes place on Earth, Simon. Um, so I'm just more so referring to like spacey stuff, I guess, what, when talking about sci-fi. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. Um, but I'm definitely intrigued by this. Now, that Mickey 7 book, I've actually never heard of it uh, up until this story. So I did look up a little bit about it. Didn't release yet. Um, so there's that. Yeah. It's coming out in February 15th, 2022. Oh, yeah, again, this is the, my first time really like hearing about this, but uh, I think this is going to be a, a good, good pairing. Um, Robert Pattinson, I feel like he's just really blowing up these days um, more and more um, again, like him coming out in the Batman, which I think is announced to be like two hours and 55 minutes, something wild like that. Yeah, um, which is like one of the longest superhero movies to date, um, which I'm very excited for. Obviously, I know you're very excited for that movie. Um, yeah, but it seems like Warner Brothers is putting uh, like a lot of faith in in Robert Pattinson in terms of just like him being a part of so many of the their big movies with not, not only uh, the Batman, but also Tenet as an example, too. And then now this movie, I think maybe that relationship started with Harry Potter. Oh, my goodness. You're right. You're right. He's just a he's a he's great. Yes. He and, and whenever you listen to him in an interview or whatever, I, I've read many interviews where he kind of just puts himself down. Like he's got this like pretty, like, uh, I don't know. It, I think he would call it like kind of dry British humor and that he just, I don't know. It's not that he doesn't think highly of himself, but he, it's, he's very humble, which I really appreciate in the way he talks about things. And there was something he said recently. There was this whole thing that blew up about him saying that, for the Batman, he didn't work out. Oh, yeah. Did you read it? Did you read about that? Yeah, that was a while ago. That was a while ago, and that blew up. But then recently and, and later on, he reiterated or he kind of corrected that statement by saying that he actually does work, of, uh, work out. Of course he does. This is a big responsibility being Batman. Obviously, he was joking. Mm-hmm. And just at the time, he wasn't working out like regularly because it was lockdown or something like that. So like, he didn't couldn't go to the gym. But mm-hmm. that just sprung to mind because he's – just uh, he keeps himself humble yeah. and that he didn't – I think that there was also – we might have talked about this on the podcast, but he snuck off of the t- a set of tenets to go audition for Matt Reeves as a Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we definitely but, did uh, talk about I, that on the show. I did find that funny as well. Yeah, He's an interesting guy and every performance that he plays in, my point is basically that he's amazing. And like The Lighthouse is a, a truly uh, like amazing performance by both Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. Mm-hmm. And I got again. We said this like a few weeks ago or last week or whatever. But I got to see Good Time. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the movie that Matt Reeves saw that made him want to cast Robert Pattinson in the first place. So it might be a good movie for us to see. Yeah, it's off Netflix now, so we missed our chance to watch it on Netflix. It might be. Oh, awesome. I forgot. Yeah, we talked about that. Damn it! I wonder where it is. I don't know. We have to take a look. I'll do a quick look for you. I would rent it. I wouldn't mind renting it. Maybe we should do that one one week and just kind of talk about it when there's no no movies coming out. But there haven't. I mean, there haven't been that many movies coming out lately now because of COVID. Anyway, but so yeah, uh, no streaming service right now. Just like did a quick search on the Apple TV app. It's six dollars to rent. Whoa, seven dollars to buy. Oh, might as well just buy it then. I guess exactly for that that extra loony man. Why not? Yeah, it's re- extremely well regarded. So. Hmm potentially worth it but yeah i'm excited for this too i mean parasite's amazing and i really love snowpiercer so that's kind of my perspective on bunjo junho anyway so it's interesting remember was it hbo that announced making a parasite miniseries 
Is that still coming? I don't know if it was HBO though. Maybe, but, maybe Showtime. Uh, I do remember something about that. I don't remember it being on HBO. Snowpiercer, of course, is being developed by like TNT based on his film too. It's cool that yeah. there's all these like spinoff concepts coming from his properties. Yeah. Um, Parasite HBO series is an original story, not Bong Joon Ho remake. It's uh, that's from IndieWire.com. Variety also posts Parasite work as an HBO miniseries. So, it, so it is HBO that is developing it. I just realized I've been, I wrote his name wrong every, everywhere in this document. His name is it's Bong Joon Ho, isn't it? Bong Joon Ho. And I said, Boon Joon Ho for some reason. Yeah. Um, my apologies. It's foolish. It's okay. I, I, I was following you. I was following your lead. It felt wrong saying it. it. Definitely wrong. I knew, I knew it. it was wrong when I was saying it, but I, just, I, I wrote it the wrong way the first time. And uh, I just kept saying it. So apologies to Bong Joon Ho. Yeah. Who's clearly listening to our podcast right now. Yeah, at least we're consistent in terms of mispronouncing uh, Korean names on the show. We have done it many a time, many a time. Yes, when we when we covered but Squid Game, I'm sure it was very evident. I also wrote in here, and this the reason why is because I use I use like iCloud like Pages Online, and it doesn't for some reason auto correct me automatically. And so I, when I make spelling errors, it doesn't fix it. But I also wrote the word lossly instead of loosely. You might have heard yeah. me pause. Relatively lostly based. Uh, Real, yeah, relatively lostly based upon the core plot of the story. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, th- th- this, that Parasite miniseries, I know that's not necessarily the story that we're talking about. Adam McKay is in talks to team up um, as well with uh, Bong Joon-ho. I feel like we talked about this on the... I don't know what that means though, man. Yeah. Adam McKay also produced Succession, but how much did he have like involvement in it? Otherwise, other than directing the first episode, that's the question. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't these executive producer rules. I, I have no idea what that means. I, I don't. I think Will Ferrell is a producer on Succession. How much of a oh. role did he have on that? I feel like not that much, but I have no idea. But yeah, it's, it's interesting because Matt Adam McKay is like huge name now, and that he will be producing more and more stuff. I'd imagine because he's made some rock star films over the last few years. But, mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number two. As Deadline reports, Roku and Funny or Die are making a biopic about Grammy Award winning parody musician Weird Al Yankovic. Is it Yankovic? I always said Weird, Weird Al Yankovic. Yankovic. Hmm. That's how I pronounce it. But y- you know what? Quick stop. Oh, hold on. Weird. Hold on, Adrian. Al Yankovic. This isn't just a name. We don't just mess up South Korean names. What, what were you talking about before? <laughs> you mess up everyone's name. We can't say Zendaya properly that's true let's be let's be real that's you're right any name that's not like steve or jimmy all right you're, you're not wrong we're probably gonna pronounce it wrong you're right you're right um it is pronounced yankovic okay anyways the biopics about weird like yankovic and the film is meant to debut on roku streaming service the roku channel and is said to be called weird the al yankovic yes. story Funny or Die writer-director Eric Appel will be writing and directing the feature film with Harry Potter actor Daniel Radcliffe cast in the title role. Ooh. To speak to his excitement for the new project, Yankovic stated, quote, When my last movie, UHF, came out in 1989, I made a solemn vow to my fans that I would release a major motion picture every 33 years like clockwork. Amazing. I'm very happy to say we're on schedule, and I'm absolutely thrilled that Daniel Radcliffe will be portraying me in the film. I have no doubt whatsoever that this is the role future generations that will remember him for. Unquote. Adrian, what do you make of this Weird Al Yankovic film from the Roku channel? Uh, um, I think this is pretty awesome. The, the Roku channel portion, I'm a little bit like, ugh, uh, that kind of sucks. Because I think we need a Roku device to get the Roku channel, as far as I'm aware. I don't think... In Canada? Yeah. But not elsewhere. Am I and not in the U.S. That yeah, was the thing we yeah. talked about. Remember, you can just get the yeah. streaming app in the U.S. and just watch it anywhere from any device for free. I was crit- remember we literally I criticized it and you said no, this is good, and I criticized it. Yeah, I know that's what I was asking Simon. I, I just was trying to clarify. Okay, for fuck's sakes, man, you have a bad memory and you've admitted it. Don't get mad at me yeah. for the confusion. I I have an enci- encyclopedic memory of our podcast, okay? I remember every moment. Not how to pronounce names, but I remember the moments of episode 1 through 82, okay? 
That's that's amazing. Uh, your your brain is just on another level. It's so amazing, man. I I remember things that didn't even record. We didn't even record yet. We haven't finished 80, 82 yet. I just realized this is eighty two. And you remember this is eighty two now, and I know yeah. the end. I know what happens at the end because he's time travel, dude. You time travel. That's pretty huge. Um, but yeah. A- anyways, uh, on the topic of this actual story, um, this is awesome. Um, I'm very nostalgic over weird weird al yankovic um me and my good friend andrash uh, were super into it when we were younger uh and again he would always like uh play it whenever we were hanging out and stuff like that and just like his music is just i feel like that was probably like the first uh, he is the first artist that i realized like that could make music that's funny if that makes sense um and then you know like as years progress there are other people that have like come uh but i feel like weird al is kind of the king of that like parody music and um them making a a um film about you know him i i imagine that it's going to be incredibly hilarious and i want to hear those songs again in like a film format uh, I think it's really awesome too that Daniel Radcliffe, uh, sorry, R- Daniel Radcliffe is being cast in this role as well. I like what Daniel Radcliffe has been doing really um, after Harry Potter, just kind of going all in on these like ridiculous roles in a lot of cases, um, not going for any of these like blockbuster movies and just kind of making his own sort of uh, passion projects maybe um, and just doing these roles that he really wants to. Kind of like in some way, Robert Pattinson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually funny. And I find, except for obviously the Batman. Yeah. But I feel like he's, he's taken a lot of smaller roles. Like I was going through his, his listing on IMDb with a, a colleague from work and he was like, I've never seen any of these. I've never even heard, heard of these movies before. Um, other than maybe the lighthouse, which just so happened to be in a theater near yeah. us, but it's, it's, uh, it's quite nice. So I, I don't know. Are, do you have any like uh, nostalgia for weird, Al, weird Al Yankovic? Do you listen to his music? It's funny. Yeah. I was just looking up the song that I knew him for first. And that's definitely the saga begins the American pie parody mm-hmm. song. I, I just loved that song as a kid. I listened to it so much and I feel like I did some kind of weird nerdy talent show <laughs> dance thing or something like that to that song. Oh, like air bands or whatever. I might've. As, a, as like an elementary yeah, school dude. child, uh, I don't remember exactly what, uh, to what extent for what, maybe it was a class project of some sort. I can't remember, but <laughs> I remember that listening to that song like nonstop. Um, the man's, the man's a legend. Quick aside, did your school have like air bands? No, no, like, no. Like literally, no. My, my elementary school had this thing called air bands where a bunch of like people would go up on stage like in front of the entire school no and way. just do like air bands, like air play, like air guitar and like pretend to like sing songs and stuff. But it's literally just them playing the song and then like people on stage pretending they're playing the instruments and singing air, the song. Uh, Airplay, was out that at that time? Uh, how about Chromecast? No, no, Simon. Chromecast? No, they they would just play the music and the, these people would be on stage pretending to play the oh. music. Your school didn't have air bands? Is this was this just a my school thing? Spotify cast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't have this at all. This is definitely a your school thing. I didn't have this. Wow. I mean, write into us, audience at spillfocuspodcast at gmail.com if you had this at your school. But no, I didn't. I didn't have it. Sorry. That's wild. I'm gonna start asking people that. Were you wait, were you the president of this club? Were you did you create this? No. Oh, okay. No, no. I, I never participated. Oh, you didn't do it. In air bands. No. I see. No. Yeah, I, I'm glad I didn't because like hindsight's 2020. That's like some of the cringiest shit ever. <laughs> like, I, I think I'm like, yeah. holy fuck, I can't believe people did that. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah no, I don't, I don't know what in what way I was doing that. I, it was definitely not an air band club. That's not what happened. No, it was no. it was probably something more cringy because it was probably some kind of stupid talent show thing that is not related to that, and we just chose mm-hmm. to do that. <laughs> Anyway, so it might have been worse. <laughs> Amazing. You know, because hindsight's twenty twenty. But maybe I've forgotten what it is and I remember the song because the song is so good that even though those were traumatic uh, memories, <laughs> I, st- <laughs> I still remember the song. So good good on you, Al. Weird Al. You did it. You did it. He, you, oh. you somehow cut through the trauma mm-hmm. of those memories but anyway yeah uh you said something earlier you said something about oh yes you said roku maybe not the greatest place for it uh i feel like roku doesn't have the greatest reputation of making content Mm. so i think that's why you also said that but anyways i just wanted to read this quote from the uh head of roku's programming 
Colin Davis, which I also was going to add to this write up, but I wasn't sure if it was necessary. But now I think it is. So I'm going to read it. Quote, there clearly aren't enough biopic movies about famous musicians, and we were excited to shine a light on the incredibly true, unexaggerated story of Weird Al. <laughs> this is sincerely the ultimate combination of talent, creativity, and friends coming together to make something genuinely funny, and we could not be prouder to call this film a Roku original. Unquote. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, it looks like they're going to make this with like a lot of care. And yeah. then it will be incredibly funny. So I'm definitely intrigued. Whenever these write-ups come in and they're like funny in a way, like the, you could just tell that they're they're write, written with care and like a passion for the project. You often, mm-hmm. not, not that they have to be funny, certainly, but sometimes it's hard to see when you have some, some of these statements that are released, it's hard to see that they really care about what they're making just because they're, it seems like some publicist just wrote up the write-up which is fair and i mean that's just gonna happen most of the time but when i see this Mm -hmm. i'm i'm like oh this guy has like a sense of humor he's clearly he cares about weird al and the point of why he's make why they're making this movie which is obviously to make this exaggerated ridiculous biopic in a Mm -hmm. in a world of half where half the movies are biopics (laughs) which isn't true but there's a lot of biopics out there yeah. for uh, musicians especially lately with like rocket man and bohemian rhapsody and if we don't just look at musicians i mean we obviously we just got like being the ricardos and we had uh mank recently and i feel like there's a lot mm-hmm. there's a lot of these that come out year on year but anyway no, I'm, I'm excited for this i'm curious i'm just kind of curious and i'm curious how we can watch it if we don't have the roku channel exactly here i guess we can, can sorry can we download the roku channel no we can't download it we have to look into that you, we, you we have sh- to get a roku stick i think you have to okay i have a roku box so i'm just gonna plug it into the the wall when i need to watch this you should also plug it into your tv if you're gonna watch it oh shit you can't just look at the roku box no dude <laughs> believe it or not wait you can't just plug no. it in and then think about the thing you want to watch and just look at the box the, the black box no you have to plug it into your television man it's oh crazy oh god yeah. That's so not the future. This, you know, I thought we were in a, a better future for technology. This is disappointing, I must say. And we're not. I'm going to return my Roku stick. Actually, are dying. no. You know what? I don't need this weird Ali uh stuff. I don't need to see it. Oh. they've disappointed Damn. me. Roku, step up your game. That was a hard right turn. No, no, I, I lean more left. Oh, no. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, that was a stupid joke, and and it, the timing was really bad. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Number three. As Deadline reports, Apple TV Plus and production company Legendary Pictures are working on a TV series based upon Legendary's Godzilla starring MonsterVerse franchise. <gasps> yeah, I left, I left a pause in there for the gasp. The show is set to be called Godzilla and the Titans and will be showrun by Outcast writer-producer Chris Black. The series will follow a family uncovering the mystery of their familial connection to the Titans and the Monarch organization during the aftermath of the destruction of San Francisco by Godzilla and King Ghidorah. As Deadline points out, the success of Godzilla vs. Kong sparked Legendary Pictures' interest in further expanding the MonsterVerse. Another film sequel is also currently in development with Godzilla vs. Kong director Adam Wingard hired on to direct. With Apple looking to add further branded IP to their Apple TV Plus TV show lineup, Legendary's search for a potential MonsterVerse TV distribution partner was apparently met by Apple with Swift enthusiasm. Adrian, I know that you have Swift enthusiasm to watch this show as soon as it comes out because I know that you love this MonsterVerse. So You bet your fine ass, Simon. Oh, thanks. Then I'm into this. Mm. I'm sold on this. This is awesome that it's going to Apple TV Plus as well, because like uh, you, you beat um, everyone on the head with a hammer with, I feel like I said that wrong. Apple TV Plus has very great production value. Jesus Christ. So I'm confident that- um, I'm some kind of serial killer. Yeah, <laughs> you are, man. I remember you beating up all those kids outside that movie theater. Ken also remembers that other situation that he wrote in about. Right, which you can't remember because it didn't happen. It happened. Because if that had happened, you'd be traumatized. But none of this happened. Unlike that situation with your Weird Al Yankovic song, song <laughs> The Saga Begins, <laughs> that episode that you as guys claim that I beat up children outside or inside a you movie did. theater, your story is never really quite straight with that. That just didn't happen. We just have to, we just have to accept it and move on. It happened. Everyone knows what happened. Who's everyone? But anyways, I think uh, Apple TV Plus is a great home for this series, and I'm I'm very excited for it. Now, uh, 
the, the showrunner, Chris Black, um, he made a show or the movie Outcast because those are two very different things. The movie Outcast, which stars Nicolas Cage, is a four uh, percent on and, and Hayden Christensen, by the way, is a four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, whereas Outcast, I feel like you could just you know you could just correct yourself right now by just looking at the web page you're on you're like you're asking me it's the tv series okay cool because yeah the outcast tv series is an 80 percent on run to menace so that's a good thing that's a good thing i have never heard of that outcast movie with nicholas cage i've never seen that um, before in my life that man is in every damn movie it's freaking hayden christensen with nicholas cage in a film together yeah i've never seen that this looks really good i'm gonna watch it Give you my full review. Okay, sounds good. Of the Outcast m- movie. Let me know. Let me know how it goes. Box office five point one million dollars. Oof. How much did it cost? Twenty five million. It's a twenty five million dollar budget, and it made five million. Jesus Christ. Yep. Wow. Success. Okay. Great success. Um, but yeah, again, I think this is uh, this is going to be awesome. I. What, wasn't there like rumors circulating that Apple was going to buy legendary pictures or something like that? Am I making those rumors up? I remember that being a thing. What? Or they were going to buy like the Godzilla IP. Am I making this up and remembering something that never occurred, Simon? The Godzilla IP. I don't. Or that they were going to buy like legendary pictures. Do you remember this? Uh, if you don't, no. you just move on. I don't. No. Legendary pictures is owned by like a Chinese company. Yeah. Like a big company that owns AMC actually. They own both, like that. That the the movie theater chain, not the 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 ch- the TV channel or the TV channel. Exactly, the movie theater chain. Okay, so I don't think Legendary Pictures is up for sale. May- yeah. mm, maybe they're in the running to pick up Godzilla vs Kong when there was a question of whether no, it couldn't have been because it's a Warner Brothers property. That's impossible. Yeah, let's find out. I'm just gonna do. Uh... I was gonna say it was in the running to be picked up on for Apple TV Plus, kind of like Greyhound was put on Apple TV Plus when the yeah. when things were looking bad for COVID in movie theaters. But that's not possible because Warner Brothers would just have put that on HBO Max, which they did. So there's no way that would have happened. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you're referring to, but I mean, yeah, maybe I made it up in my brain. But uh, yeah, I'm sold on this. What do you think? Uh look, man, you can. I mean, you can go back to our our, our closer look episode of Godzilla vs Kong to you know find out audience what i thought about godzilla versus kong as a movie i thought it was very flawed i felt like there was it was plot hole city it was not great for some reason the first two films in that series are very focused on the science which i appreciate because it helps to bring in cohesive cohesively bring together a, a like a plot line that would make sense for this kind of world it's not just giant monsters fighting each other which i'm sure in theory, Adrian, you might say it would be acceptable to you, but you didn't love Godzilla vs. Kong either. So No. And I believe it's... This wasn't enough action. I believe that's not true. I believe that you wanted more uh, heartfelt moments. You wanted more mo- connection moments between potentially Godzilla and or King Kong and the, the various characters or the various characters so that we actually care about what they're, they're dealing with. Yeah. I just didn't care. I don't care. The action is important, but the, the plot has to kind of be informed by the action and vice versa. And I don't think that it did enough of that. It was disappointing in the way that it was done. So I'm not super excited right now for the outlook of the series, especially with Adam Wingard making the next film. I am less interested than I was when I watched with my girlfriend, the first two films in the series, Uh, the 2014 Godzilla film, and then Godzilla King of the Monsters, which I think were better movies overall. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know what this is going to be like, but one thing's for sure. Apple's got a lot of money. They're now like listed as like a $3 trillion company. I think it's like the first $3 trillion company in history or something like that. And they're going to do something really cool with this. Like the, the budget on Foundation, as an example, was huge. And that's that science fiction uh, Isaac Asimov adaptation that they made, that TV series with uh, David S. Goyer uh, hired as showrunner. I think he wrote the, the not the full show, but he was definitely – heavily involved in that series and that show looks like the production values are through the roof any science fiction film i'd imagine would have to be with that much cg so i am interested vaguely but i just don't care enough about this universe because they they went the way that i wouldn't have gone which is to be out with science science doesn't matter we don't care there's just monsters fighting each other that's all that matters 
There's no radiation, even though radiation was like one of the major themes of literally the entire series since the, like almost the first shot of the first movie. That was so important. But no, radiation now doesn't exist. We don't have to worry about that. Nah, that's stupid. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That was my review of Godzilla versus Kong in a nutshell. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, Adrian. I appreciate that. Um, I think you were tired of what I was saying there very early on because you didn't respond very much. So, Well, the reason I didn't respond is because you cut out for like a solid two minutes there. Oh, shit. So I was just talking to myself in a void. You don't even know what I was saying. Yeah, I have no clue what you said. So, I, Well, I'm not going to repeat it here. But if you want to listen to it, Adrian, download that episode from Apple Podcasts, <laughs> Spotify, Google Podcasts. Sounds good, man. I will. Okay. I will. Adrian... Do you have anything else to say about this? Is that I feel like this is your your top story of the of the year here so far. I mean, it's early in twenty twenty two, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, no, I, I feel like I, I said what I, I had to say. Like uh, it's just something that interests me, and um, I I didn't love Godzilla versus Kong um, personally. I just thought it could have been a little bit more action heavy, more variety of action. I should clarify uh, is what I was kind of looking for, and I really like Godzilla King of the Monsters. I thought that movie was freaking awesome. Um, despite like the corniness of the human factor and everything like that. Um, so I don't know. I'm sold on this Godzilla universe. I want to see more out of this. And if we can get like a full series of just like these, these big monsters just beating the living shit out of one another or destroying like cities and stuff. I'm in baby. I'm in. Mm. Okay. Big monsters go boom, boom is a, uh, is a selling feature for Adrian is what you're saying. Yeah. I'm a simple man. Mm. Indeed. Now onto the montage, a sequence of our show in which I briefly present the week's smaller news stories as Adrian delivers a brisk verdict. Number one, according to Deadline, Moon Knight actor Ethan Hawke has been cast in the upcoming film from Mr. Robot creator Sam Esmail. The new film is an adaptation of Rahman Alam's novel Leave the World Behind and will also star Julia Roberts and Mahershala Ali. Oh, okay. Cool beans. I still got to watch the rest of Mr. Robot, another TV series I never finished. Yeah, me too. And I don't remember exactly what happened. And that's kind of why I've hesitated. Otherwise, I would have already watched season four. Yeah. Number two, as reported by website Collider, the Batman and Dune cinematographer Greg Fraser is officially working with director Gareth Edwards on the John David Washington starring science fiction film True Love. This will be a reunion between the two collaborators who previously worked together on Star Wars Rogue One. Ah, I forgot there was a new episode of Book of Boba Fett again this week. (sighs) Number three, as Publication Variety reports, Paramount Plus has renewed Star Trek Discovery for a fifth season. Star Trek Lower Decks for a fourth season, and Star Trek Strange New Worlds for a second season. Star Trek Strange New Worlds will debut its first season on May 5th, 2022. Wild. So they're renewing the show for a second season before the launch of the first season. It's a lot of Star Trek. It's also that Picard show. That's the show I'm most interested in, to be honest. Yeah. Patrick Stewart's amazing. Yeah, I'm not really interested in any of them, to be honest. Number four, as announced by streaming giant Netflix, the first season of the animated Cuphead TV series adaptation will launch on Netflix for February 18th, 2022. Ooh, this looks neat. Um, Probably won't watch it, but uh, yeah, it's based on the uh, hit video game Cuphead. Apologies to Kenneth Stadelbauer for talking about video games. Number five, as reported on by Variety, Amazon Prime's Lord of the Rings TV series will be called Rings of Power and will debut on September 2nd, 2022. Oh, interesting. This is a show I will probably watch, and then I'm going to rewatch the Lord of the Rings movies prior to this, mo- this show. The budget just keeps ticking up on that show as well. Isn't it like a, like, it feels like it's at a billion dollars at this fucking point. <laughs> I feel like it's a lot. Moving sets to England still boggles my mind. Like, just finish the show you started in New Zealand. But anyway, whatever. Number six. As Deadline reports, Amazon's The Boys superhero spinoff series, The Boys Diabolical, is scheduled for a March 4th, 2022 release date. Oh, they released a little teaser for this. I'm I'm very much into this. I'm, I'm excited to watch this show. It looks fun. Number seven. As Variety reports, the Tom Cruise starring Mission Impossible 7 and 8 have been delayed to a July 14th, 2023 release date and a June 28th, 2024 release date, respectively. It's unfortunate we must wait longer for these movies, but goddamn, can I... Uh... 
Uh, can I not wait for this? I'm very excited. Number eight. According to Deadline, Dawson's Creek star Joshua Jackson and Party Down star Lizzie Kaplan have both been cast in the TV series adaptation of psychosexual thriller film Fatal Attraction. Why the hell isn't Lizzie Kaplan going back to the Party Down revival? Go back to the Party Down revival, Lizzie. Kaplan. There was another project she was working on. I can't remember which one, but that's the reason. I know. Scheduling conflicts. And it was a mini series. So I was hoping that when she finished that project, she'd go back to Party Down. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, I hope she had these cameos. That's a bummer. Yeah. Number nine. As Variety reports, the stop motion Chicken Run sequel will be called Chicken Run Dawn of the Nugget. Will star Zachary Levi and Bandy Newton and will premiere during holiday 2024 on Netflix. Oh, I don't really care for like Chicken Run, like the Wallace and Gromit sort of style movies. Like they're just not really for me. Do you like them? Uh, I enjoyed Trick and Run when I watched it as a child. Yeah. Number 10. As followed by publication of The Hollywood Reporter, Netflix is developing an eight-episode reboot of the Japanese and American cooking competition series Iron Chef. The show is planned for a premiere in 2022 and will officially be titled Iron Chef Quest for an Iron Legend. Oh, this I'm excited for. This is I'm, I'm definitely watching this when it's released. Can't fucking wait. Love Iron Chef. And that concludes... The montage. Watch out, watch out, Iron Chef montage. Whew. I do love cooking shows, Simon. I do like those competition cooking shows on occasion. On occasion. Chopped. Chopped was uh, is a staple uh, in our old uh, place of, well, I guess you still work there now, technically. Old place of uh, work break room, Simon. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I always liked Iron Chef the best. I always thought that that concept yeah, is really cool, having these four chefs lined up. You know, Bobby Flay, Kat Cora, uh, Mario Batali, and uh, – oh, man, what's the guy's name? He was awesome. He's actually my favorite guy. Is the guy who, who they um, they got from the Japanese version of the show. Yeah. That's his name. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking. I don't want to butcher his name, so I'm going to look it up. Are you also looking it up at the same time? Yes. Who will get there first? I don't know. Masa, Masaharu Morimoto. Yes. He was amazing. And anytime that he was chosen, um, I always felt like he might win. Mm-hmm. Like, cause he, he, like, not that the other ones wouldn't win too, but I just felt like he always had the, these awesome dishes that I thought, oh, wow, this guy's like, yeah, it was really cool. I, I hope they go like that kind of alt, also like the, a more multicultural angle and pull in like incredible chefs from various, mm-hmm. various parts of the world. Um and have them compete with the the runner up chef. I w- I'm wondering if each season will, if they're going to do multiple seasons, if they're going to have a different set of four chefs or what their actual plan will be to have, yeah. you know, as the core, the core four, I'm assuming chefs that the mm-hmm. whatever the competitor, whoever the competitor is, will choose. Did they, wait, did this is the, I can't remember now. Does the competitor choose one of the four chefs? Like, I want to defeat Bobby Flay, and then Bobby Flay. I think that's how it worked, if I recall correctly. Like, the competitor would be like, I'm, I'm gonna battle, you know, yeah, Bobby Flay or whatever. I think also there's like a there's like stock footage of each of the chefs, and they show them all standing in their like glass dome before they come out mm-hmm. to defeat the the challenger. I'm pretty sure that's like stock footage of like if it's not Bobby Flay, Bobby Flay competing, and it's like Mario Batali. I'm pretty sure like they just didn't have them there at the on the day, but they they use the same stock footage or multiple. They have like multiple shots just for when they have to show them in the beginning of the show because that would make the only, only thing that would make sense because I'd imagine like Cat Core is not sitting there like oh I guess I didn't get chosen and then she goes home. That seems unlikely. Yeah, but chills there for like. 12 hours or however long. It's like, God damn it. This is the 17th week in a row. Yeah. I can't believe it. I, I'm sure that they try to balance it as well to make sure that each chef gets enough screen time. But yeah, exactly. I don't know if it, it would be good or bad. You know, like if you're like standing there, it's like, do you want to get picked? Because then th- there's almost like this con- like negative connotation, like, oh, this person thinks they can beat me. Um, it's always like that. That's what's so interesting. I feel like about that concept. It's like they think that they, they can beat me, really? Mm-hmm. I, I hope Bobby yeah. Flay is one of the chefs because Bobby Flay is not really stopped. He's kind of gone. I feel like he's the he's gotten more famous over time. He's an entourage. Mario Batali, on the other hand, had that very terrible controversy. Oh, what happened with him? Uh, there's some like sexual harassment thing. Ah, oh, bummer. If I correctly remember, yeah. And I I'm not aware of. Um, I think Kat Cora had a show too. 
Uh, yeah, Batali was accused of sexually assaulting multiple women in a 2017 expose in Eater, the food site. He was also charged in Boston in 2019 with indecent assault and battery for kissing and groping a woman against her will in 2017. Yikes. Oof, that sucks. Well. Oh, it says a cat core retired. Oh. Hmm. Damn. 600,000 sexual harassment settlement reached in Batali and Bastianich case. Wow. Ah, what a shitty guy. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Damn it. Um, on a later note, Netflix does have like some like pretty good like competition cooking shows. Well, there's one in particular that pops into my mind, uh, but they do have like a lot of cooking shows. But like the they one do. competition cooking show that I really like is a show called The Final Table. There was only one season and it released in 2018. But it's like uh, like a group of chefs usually paired in like groups of two um, from like all parts of the world. And then every day was like a new competition of cuisine they had to make. Oh, and then, you know, like people would be voted off. So like, you know, one episode would be like Mexico. The the next episode would be like Spain or whatever. And then the like UK, Brazil, um, I think India was one of them. Japan may have been one of them. I see. Um, and just like a bunch of that uh, sort of stuff. And yeah, it's, it's a it was an awesome show. And I, I'm, I'm very excited for this iron chef show to come back because i really love those cooking shows baby i really love them yeah oh yeah actually to speak what i was to to what i was saying before i imagine that there's gonna be four chefs like four core you know the iron chefs yeah and that because there's the reason why there's eight episodes is because each of them gets one challenge each each of the get sorry each of them gets two challengers yes two thank you for throwing that two in there i hope alton brown comes back to yeah Yeah, me too. I really like Alton Brown. Yeah. Just an interesting guy. Like the way he's like a, I think it was like a chemi- chemist or something, like a food chemist. So all of his, like his show is always like super interesting. He'd have like that blackboard in the background and explain like why you would cook things a specific way or why, you know, doing one thing over another thing makes like the food taste better or have a better texture or whatever. I really loved his stuff. The other guy too, there was two, like two announcers and they kind of, they played off of each other. It was Elton Brown and there was the other guy. I can't remember the guy, other guy's name, but I, I felt like they're, they're dynamic because the other guy's kind of more, I guess, less uh, flowery in his language. Uh, whereas mm-hmm. Elton Brown's kind of more uh, exorbitant. Like he's kind of more uh, ener- energetic. I, li- I like the way that they played off of each other. It was like, to me, it was a very well put together show. I wonder if I watched it again, if I wouldn't like it as much now, because it's maybe a little bit dated. I don't know. But mm-hmm. um, well, I guess if Mario Batali is involved in the, in the episode I watch. I, I don't think he will be. I think it's safe to say no, he will I, not have any inclusion. I'm saying if I watched the episode with Mario Batali, I, I would imagine oh. it would be dated. It would feel like it does not, does not stand the test of time. Yeah. Watching House of Cards, Kevin Spacey. Yes. It's weird that you didn't understand what I was saying. I didn't. It's like I, you, you were insinuating that I was going to time travel and watch the new series with Mario Batali and feel like it was dated. Yeah. That doesn't make any yeah. sense, Adrian. What do you got for me, buddy? I got no releases for you, Simon. Okay. What are they? Uh, they're, uh, this is for the week of January 24th to January the 30th. Uh, there weren't too many movies coming out this week, at least huh. what I could find. So, um, okay. I'll get through this. There's no mo- like theatrical releases, nothing on Cineplex to show me that movies are coming back. Yeah. Uh, or that movies are releasing. Nothing well, I can not. find online. They're not really. I don't think there's many places in Canada that Cineplexes are open. So yeah. January, sorry, January 31st, man. I know. 50% capacity, babe. I know. God, I can't wait. God, I can't wait. I really hope that Bell movie is still in theaters. I really want to watch that. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. No, B E L L E. No, sorry, no, not B E. Wait, no, B E L L E. Huh? Bell. Not B E. That movie, Bell. It's like an anime movie. Yeah. That's really good. Yes. I'm excited for it. So you spell Bell. Anyways. Ding, 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 ding. No, that's B E L L. Ding, 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 that's, ding, ding. That's the Bell you're doing, Simon. I'm saying Bell as in like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, Beauty and the Beast, that bell. The god is dead. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> no. What is that from? Your favorite movie, the movie we mentioned at the end of every single podcast episode. Oh, yeah. Ding, ding, oh, ding, yeah. ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I don't think that's actually the line, though. He says ding, dong, ding, dong. I think it's ding, dong, ding, He's, dong. The, the character says ding, dong, ding, dong. The god is dead. <laughs> The god is dead. He's referring to Superman. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I understand. Yeah. Come on. He, that was a great Lex Luthor, honestly. People just need to give give it a rest. It's a different version. Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent. Ah. Yes, exactly. 
I love him. I actually really like Jesse Eisenberg in that movie. Okay, what, what movies are coming out? So the first movies coming out are coming out on Tuesday, January the 25th. There's a movie called Birds Like Us. This is a confirmed by Movie Insider and the Apple TV app. This is a video on demand uh, kids movie with a great cast, uh, but an awful looking animation. Very bad animation. It looks super cheap and gross. I don't like it. In your opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, it's my opinion, Simon. I wrote this. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I thought you were reading off of a... Oh, this wasn't the one that you... No, this is not from the actual write-up. Uh, write oh, you didn't plagiarize this one. No. We're not playing that game this week. It didn't say on Google where it said Birds Like Us. It didn't say the synopsis was a kid's movie with a great cast and awful looking animation, period. No, it didn't, believe it or not. Oh, okay. I, I wrote that myself. Just double checking. I wrote that myself. I did plagiarize one of these, but you, you, it's a very obvious one. I'll, I'll, I'll show you uh, when I get there because it literally just in, explains the entire movie. Like beat for beat. It's wild. I love how Anyways. every time you read off the new releases, you reference this game we play, but no one knows the context at any point, except for maybe Kenneth Stadelbauer, who's the only one who's really listened to our podcast week on week, I feel like. My mom does. Okay. So your mom, this is for your mom, basically, when you make that reference. And Ken. And you. Anyways, the audience out there that doesn't know what we're talking about, Adrian sometimes plays this game where they, he posts the synopsis as a plagiarized copy and paste for any particular movie and makes me guess which one he didn't write and that he copied and pasted and he doesn't want me to play it this week so what's the next movie coming up this week adrian two deaths of henry baker it's oh. confirmed by movie inside in the apple tv app this is a video wow. on a man movie and it's about a cat an outlaw that gets released from prison after 25 years and he finds former foes and friends waiting for him henry baker's a cat no Simon, he's an outlaw. Well, how does he have two lives? I don't know. Cats have nine. Completely unrealistic. Next movie. Yeah, it is unrealistic, but it is a fictional film. But the next movie is coming out on Thursday, January 27th, and it's a it's called The Fallout, Simon. It's confirmed by Movie Insider in the trailer. This is an HBO Max original movie. Probably Crave, I put there in brackets, because so far most HBO Max originals have been coming to Crave. Uh, and this not really. But okay. Well, like the actual HBO Max original movies, not the ones that are like theatrically theatrically released and put on HBO. Are you Max. sure this isn't coming out theatrically as well? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Um, so it's a coming of age story about friendship developed through tragedy. Hmm. Simon. Yeah. Next up is uh Friday, January twenty eighth, and the movie's coming out on that day. The first one is a movie called Home Team. Oh and uh, this is a Netflix original movie about a disgraced NFL coach that attempts to reconnect with his son by coaching his youth football team. Oh it stars uh, Kevin Smith in this. Rob oh. Schneider's in it. Oh, oh yeah. interesting stuff. Rob's oh, it's a comedy. I think so. Or maybe not. With those actors, it seems so. But it might not be. Hmm. You didn't. You didn't glean that. You didn't glean that from the description you read. The write up. No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. That did seem important. That it, you want me to find it if it's comedy. Let me look at no, it. No, it's fine. No, it's I'm fine. looking it up. What's the next movie? What's the next movie? Adrian, come Home on. You don't have all day. Team movie. Oh my god. It is labeled as. I'm, I'm sorry. I asked. Um. I'm sorry. Uh. Da 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 da. Is this science fiction film? It is like Snowpiercer. Inspired by actual events, edited by music by doesn't really say the genre of the film. Hmm. Production. Yeah. Okay. Nothing to uh show that it is a comedy, but again, with those actors involved, it might and it might be a comedy. Right. Anyways, uh next up is The Ice Age Adventures of Buck. That, that's what I, we that's what we waited for. Yeah. That's what me, Jimmy. Kenneth Stadelbauer and the rest of the audience in New Zealand waited for, Adrian? Yeah, exactly. You to look it up to fail and not find out the answer. Yeah, there is no answer. Yeah, there is There is no answer. It doesn't have a genre. Continue. There literally is not an answer. It's fine. I'm not going to, we're not going to argue here. Come on, this is. The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild is up next and it's a Disney Plus oh. original release and uh, Ice Age is back, baby. Ice Age is back. Didn't we just talk about an Ice Age movie? Uh, maybe. Maybe it was this one. Oh, there's an Ice Age TV series coming out. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I don't recall. Anyways, next movie. It's coming out. Do you do you like Ice Age? Mm, I like the first one quite a bit. Yeah. But uh, I have no real attachment to the rest of the series, which has, I feel like, five movies. Yeah, I have no idea. I wrong. did like the first one, though. Yeah, me too. Good actors. Yeah, yeah, there, there are good actors. In it. Yeah. 
And in general, there are good actors too. Out there. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. Yeah. Just out there hanging out, acting. Yeah. Yeah. The Requiem. The Requin. R-E-Q-U-I-N. How would you pronounce that? Requin? The Requin? Yeah, sure. Uh, this confirmed my movie inside on the Apple TV app. There's a video on demand movie, and it's a, about a hurricane that turns a fun vacation into a nightmare when a couple gets stranded at sea in their villa. Is this a French film? Maybe. Like Requin in French is shark in English. Oh, oh my goodness. So it's called The Shark. It would make sense because uh, there is a shark in the in the picture. Okay. Cool, man. So maybe it is. This just sounds like the premise of that movie Open Water that came out forever ago. Now, there's a L- Alicia Silverstone. So I don't think this is a French movie per se. Yeah. Is that all? A other movie, Shallow, with um, Blake Lively where she's stuck on a rock and there's a shark? Yeah. Is that 47 Meters Down movie? Oh, no. Which was a bad movie. Okay. Where the... I'm glad it wasn't revisionist history for you. There's a shark. But yeah, anyways, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a bad movie. Johannes Roberts. Yeah, Johannes Roberts, the hit director that made a good movie, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon Town. Debatable. Uh, and there's that, you ever watch that movie Crawl, where it's like a big hurricane no. happens and there's like a- Isn't that a crocodile though? Or an alligator? It is a crocodile. No. Or an alligator. It's a good movie though. I feel like this is your type of movie. I feel like you've seen a lot of these movies. It's a fun movie. I like I like animals trying to kill people. Or the the Meg the Meg. Oh yeah, that was Did a you fun talked movie about too. recently. That was a fun movie. But you thought you thought the tone was weird. Like it didn't really. It was a little bit off. Sometimes it took itself too seriously. Sometimes it was a comedy, and I was very confused. I was like oh yay, we're yeah. just having a good time here. There's a big shark. Watch out! And then it like bites them. And then I didn't love Jimmy anyway. Sometimes they're just like not you, Jimmy. Sorry, sorry, Jimmy. I meant like a fake Jimmy. There's a big shark here, and then we got to take him out. Oh my God, my father just pa- passed away from a big shark. I'm so sad. You know what I mean? Like it was actually drama, like, or they were doing it for comedy, comedy's sake. No, it was like actual, actual drama. Oh, yeah. Interesting. It's a fun movie though. Okay. What what else is coming out, Adrian? What else is coming out this Riff. week? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, are you okay? Got a little tickle in the back of my ickle, dude. Rifkin's Festival is up next and this confirmed by movie insider in the apple tv app this is a video on demand movie and this is the the, the one that i plagiarized because i was just like what this is the entire plot of the movie so get ready rifkin's festival centers on a married american couple who go to the san sebastian film festival and get caught up in the magic of the event the beauty and charm of spain and the fantasy of movies she has an affair with a brilliant french movie director and he falls in love with a beautiful spanish woman who lives there a comedy romance that resolves itself in a funny but romantic way. <laughs> <laughs> that resolves itself. I feel like you just don't put the word "resolves" in a in a you know yeah. a, 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 like a descriptor for a film. It's like don't to worry. To watch it. This movie does have a resolution. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. This movie does have an ending. It's funny that, <laughs> and romantic. <laughs> Yeah, I like saw that right. I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, this is awful. <laughs> so I just had to bring that in. Um, okay. But that's how we usually end the podcast. We, we resolve every podcast. Um, but in a funny and romantic way. Exactly. Funny and romantic. Yeah. Funny but romantic. Sorry. A funny but romantic way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, the final movie coming out is, um, uh, is coming out on Saturday, January the 29th. It's a movie called The Falls, and it's a Netflix original movie about a mother and a daughter trying to mend their relationship after being stuck in quarantine together. Oh, no. I know, Simon. It's a Taiwan-based movie, if I recall correctly, which is interesting. Yeah. That's it. That's all, baby. That's it. That's all. Oh, very good. Very good, Adrian. Well... <sighs> Yeah. That's pretty much the end of our regular scheduled programming for this episode, episode 82. Do you have anything else to add, Adrian, before we wrap this up for realsies? Um, not really. I mean, uh, th- I think uh, this was uh, a time well spent with you. Oh, that's so nice. And I hope the, l- the the listeners thought this was time well spent while they were listening to us on either iTunes or YouTube or or, or Google Podcasts, or Spotify, oh. or oh. iHeartRadio, or I t- or Tune Tune up I t- Tune Nine the t- Tune iTunes Radio. I what Tune In iHeartRadio Tune In Radio. I was getting there. Are you making fun of me because last episode I did the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> I tune Tune I In time, Tune In. 
you 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 planted a little seed in the back of my brain that made me that made me do that. Ah, it's like when someone yawns in front of you and you yawn as well. Made you yawn. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. In a funny but romantic way. <laughs> in a fun yeah. That's that's right. That's yeah. right. All right, Adrian. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining me once again. I appreciate you. I appreciate you joining me week on week and creating this ridiculous uh, podcast with me. You know? Yeah, I do know. And I appreciate you back. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Thank you for listening to the 82nd episode of you. Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. My name is Simon Eady, and this is Adrian Pinter signing off. It is I signing off. And, uh, as per usual, um, I'm going to sign off um, uh, in in a way that is both funny uh, but romantic. See, that's what I was doing. That's what I was doing there. That's why I said I love you, so that we can sign off in a funny but romantic way. Yeah, I love I loved you back. Not not necessarily true though. I just needed to do that so that we can sign off properly. Why would it Why would it necessarily be true? What the fuck? Are you gonna Are you gonna sign off? Because we're the clock's running. I well, I'm just. I'm a little bit shocked here you, that, that you had to just add in that it's not necessarily true. Why isn't it I didn't true? say it's not true. I said it's not necessarily true. Okay, whatever. You have to wrap it up. This is we're, – we're on the clock. When Anyways. we – you know, when I end the show, I intend to keep it brisk. I don't know. I'm just kind of shocked right now. But uh, anyways, there's uh, – You know who else is shocked? I just want everyone to know <laughs> Batman and Batman v Superman, which is a great movie. It's a good, it's it's an awesome movie even and, and so is uh, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon Town. Um, also a really Ugh. good movie that ends in a mm. funny but romantic way. No. That's a stretch. Um take care. Goodbye. Goodbye.